Hey everyone, welcome to another video that I'm going to make up as I go along. Now you may have seen before that I stream my um, SDR uh, radio from a server to this computer here. I don't generally use it locally. And the way I've been doing that before was with RTL TCP. So you set up for the RTL dongles um, a server that serves that on TCP and you can just view it here. So I'll just quickly show you that. So on the server you can run RTL TCP. I'll just stop that before it really starts and get a list of the devices. Now you can see I've got just a few there and I reserve this one for serving on RTL TCP. So what I do is I just serve it, um, that device, I've already forgotten what it was, uh, device number three, so RTL TCP device three and the address, just the address I want to bind it to and that listens now. So now I can just connect to that server with my client software here remotely and access the radio. So one example of that, is um, this Welly I.O. for the radio. You can see here, it's, it's I'll mute that. Um, it's getting there, it's sluggish. Um, it'll find it, there it is, locked in and off it goes. Now I've only got IPv6 on this network, I've got rid of all IPv4, okay? But as you can see on this program, if I, if I didn't use the host name, it only lets me put in sort of a format for IPv4. But the program can actually do IPv6, you just gotta resolve it by host name. So anyway, that's the concept of RTL TCP, which I'm sure most of you are aware of. Now that's good and simple for RTL dongles, but I've also got a HackRF, and I want to stream that uh, remotely as well. So there's a thing called SOAPY, SOAPY server, and that sort of manages a whole bunch of RTL devices, like you saw that I've got a few, and just presents them on the network to use your client software there. So I'll show you how that works. So on the server, you go SOAPY SDR server, bind and it comes up. And one thing you'll notice, it's added this um, MDNS entry here. And if you go back to my last video, I showed you that it can find things on the network. Well, Soapy is one of them as well. So now, if I start up uh, GQRX, you can see on the server side, it's, it's being accessed on all those things. And obviously it, my previous settings aren't valid, but that's all right. So on here for, the, um, for GQRX, the device, I can select one of these devices that's out there. Now I can't select RTL TCP because as I showed, I'm just, I've reserved that um, adapter for that purpose. But any of these others, I can just click one of those and run that up. So off it goes and here we are. Oh, channel 7 on the UHF CVs. I'll leave that there. But what it, what it does let me do is pick the hack RF, which I've got out there. So I can actually run a hack RF with 20 mega bandwidth over the network. So um, to show that, let me just go, I'll go to 98, give it a bit of gain here so you see what's going on, Oop, a bit rough. So you can see 88, 108, I've got 20 mega bandwidth coming through the network. Now while I was doing that, I was doing a packet capture, of course. Now the way I see it, this sort of application should use UDP because it's only live information. It's just an RF sample coming in. It's like voice, you use UDP because if you've missed it, it's too late. So it's less overhead than using um, TCP, like RTL TCP. Um, and in this sort of high bandwidth application, it'll make a big difference. So I wanted to show that's UDP, but I'll show you what else is in the capture. All right, so I've just trimmed it down a bit um, to show you the interesting stuff. And you can see there's a SOAPY server here responding to the um, MDNS queries like I showed in the last video. You can see it there, SOAPY TCP local for the local network, um, serves the name, and there it is. But it also did, um, where is it? Down here. It did um, SSDP, so Simple Service Discovery Protocol. Now, as I said, I'm only using IPv6, but this is on IPv4 as well. Uh, I forget the address. It's something, something, 255, 251, I think. But anyway, it calls out looking for servers, and you can see it's looking for a SOAPY server. And it gets a response from the server saying the SOAPY server's here. And what you'll notice in that response, it's got a port. It's saying, okay, the location is the server on port 55132, TCP, obviously. And you can see that's one of my filters up here because just after that, you get the SYN SYNAC ACK. The client now knows where to go for its server. Now this TCP stuff is just the, um, the initial setup. So if I follow that stream, probably see you if I put it on the right screen. Oh yeah, it was a big capture, it got big real quick because I was doing the other stuff. You can see here, if you can see, um, it feeds back all the stuff that's available to it on that server. That's how that came up in GQRX. Then of course, if 
if I get rid of all the filters, you can see when I started playing stuff, um, it's just UDP for the actual uh, traffic. So that's pretty good. And that, that would have all been negotiated during that setup for the port to use. So that's roughly how this SDR SOAPY server works. Now to install it, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The way I did it was I downloaded the source code and compiled it, but you can't just app get install the, um, the thing from the distro. So I'll do that method now to try and keep it simple. So I've just got a different computer here just for the hell of it. So you do sudo apt install soapy SDR tools. Okay, get that going. Oh, fuck, I've already done it. So soapy SDR tools. Another one is um, another one is soapy remote server. So it serves it remotely. I've done that too. And the other thing is you have to install the modules for what sort of thing you're going to serve. So if you're going to serve a HackRF, you have to add the HackRF module to serve and same with SDR and others because we can serve all these sorts of things. So you might want to do soapy SDR module hack RF and that's already done and the other one is RTL SDR and that's probably done as well. So I've already done them all and as I said to run it um, soapy SDR server bind and that'll do it. So it's already in use because I've already got it running. PS or grep Soapy. You can see I've already got it there because I've got it set up to run at startup. So just install those programs and you should be able to run it in the network. Obviously you need the base R RTL installed like you probably do already anyway and same for the HackRF. Like they've got to be installed before this for this to work. This is just a way to, to access those in a generic way. Now the other thing to mention is an RTL dongle can, can sample roughly like 2 meg of RF bandwidth but to put that over the network it works out to be about 35 meg of network bandwidth. So with a HackRF that can do 20 meg of RF bandwidth, that does turn out to be 350 meg a second um, uh, network bandwidth. So I'll just show you that in a, um, in a LibreNMS graph that's been running a while and I'll just show you those. But I'll also um, just go back to that and see if I can do that over Wi-Fi. Okay, on my desktop, I've had the um, HackRF running over the network here with 20 meg of bandwidth to show you the uh, network bandwidth. So if I just show you on LibreNMS, you can see here is what it's doing. And you can see down the bottom here, it's about 342 meg a second, 336, somewhere around the 340 mark a second. So that's, that's quite a lot of bandwidth for one application. This stuff back here earlier in the day at about 40 meg, that was the RTL uh, TCP, just when I was listening to some radio for a little while. Um, which is a lot in itself, 35 meg second, but it's nothing compared to, to this one here. So I just thought I'd show you that. Now I'll run GQRX, but I'll run it from an app image because the, the standard install has trouble with this. But if you download the app image from the site, it, uh, it works. So I'll just make sure it's on 20 meg, 20 meg bandwidth. Oh, there we go. You can hear it there. So there's no, no stuttering. But I better mute that, otherwise I get done for copyright. But you can see it's coming in there with um, 20 meg of bandwidth, which, as I said, pushes about 350 meg of um, network bandwidth. Right, so there's the uh, laptop with no cables doing that um, 20 meg thing. So I wouldn't recommend doing that on normal home stuff because there's not many applications that really push 350 meg a second for normal usage, other than just you know file copying and iperf testing. A real, a real application using that sort of bandwidth is pretty rare. Um, so I'm running that through a Ruber APs, which can handle that, but I don't know if the old D-Link will, will manage, <laughs> who knows. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you that. So that's how I can now stream um, my SDR stuff from a server into here without really having to worry too much about starting an RTL TCP stream. And I can also use the HackRF. Oh, and something else I got recently, I'll just point out, is um, I got a Lime SDR given to me the other day. Uh, which I haven't had a chance to play with yet, but it, can, it looks like it can do some funky things. So I'll look at that in the future. Um, but anyway, for now, I just wanted to show you a good way to serve SDR stuff so you don't have to have everything at the desk, because I like my desk nice and clean. And uh, that's how I'll be doing it from now on. So that'll do for now. Until next time, take it easy.